<laughs> Dr. Grace. <laughs> hey, thanks for having me on the show. What a pleasure to be here with you guys. It's always a joy to have you. Brandon Big B, what about it? Hey, hey, we appreciate you being here, Dr. Grace. I know you got something good for us today. Well, we got a lot of good news from Capitol Hill Tell this week. Tell us about week. it. Tell us. Yeah. You know, uh, Carl, unfortunately, every time I'm on the show, we have bad news, but this week is an exception. <laughs> okay. And it is. It begins with three parts of this good news. The first is that finally, 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 the Speaker of the House, John Boehner, has capitulated, and we will get a select committee on Benghazi. That is huge because many people working on this case have been calling for a select committee that has special investigative powers. So far, there have been several committees on Benghazi. Some of the testimony has been behind closed doors, and all of the committees don't work together. So they don't even know what the right hand doesn't know what the left hand is doing. The left foot doesn't know what the right foot is doing in Washington, D.C. That's no surprise. So what the select committee is going to do is it's going to bring all the information together. It's going to have special subpoena powers. And the best news of all, it is headed up by South Carolina Republican Trey Gowdy. Yeah. You all know Trey Gowdy. He's yeah. a former prosecutor. He shoots from the hip. Yes, he does. He's a man of tremendous integrity. He is brilliant, and he talks plain talk, which I think is usually the sign of the greatest brilliance of all. Um, and he is tough as nails. He has been shaming the press for not reporting on Benghazi properly. He's going to head up this committee, and one of the first things he's going to do is subpoena Hillary Clinton. So what does this all mean in a nutshell? It means that the Benghazi investigation is going now to a whole new level. This is getting serious. It is a snowball that just keeps growing. Uh, John Boehner, in a press conference, explained why he is uh, approving of this select committee. And the reason is that there was an email that was discovered from Ben Rose, who is a White House advisor. And he was basically telling his team, the entire communications team, that when they spoke about Benghazi to the public, they had to make sure, quote, that they didn't present it as a failure of policy. And that is as close to a smoking gun as we are going to get. Because what that really implies, indicates, with beyond the shadow of a doubt, that they had to do and say anything right. but explain to the American people that al-Qaeda was responsible, or an al-Qaeda offshoot was responsible for the attack on the compound and the death of four Americans. Absolutely. We could not put this as a failure at the feet of President Barack Obama. Absolutely. Now, let me break in and just remind you, Dr. Grace, when this thing broke what, is it, has it been two years since Benghazi? 2012. Yes. All right. It's, All right. It's Dr. It's Grace? Been a little bit under it. It was uh, in 2012, <clears throat> September of 2012. All right. Yep. Dr. Grace, let me remind you. When it broke, and the analysis that I did, and then the analysis that you and I did, and the analysis that, that Big B was doing back then, and Mike Shoesmith and I, and P.P. P. Simmons, we might as well have had three heads back in those days yeah. when we were saying that, look, a video didn't cause this. Uh, this was a complete failure of policy. It was a cover-up. It was a confederacy of dunces. It was a plethora, a virtual cornucopia of lies. Um, we were called racist. We were called idiots. We were called bigots. We were called tinfoil hat-wearing conspiracy theorists. John Boehner, back in those days, I don't remember his exact words, but he was basically saying, that this investigation was not going to happen, that there was nothing wrong with it. I mean, he didn't say there was nothing wrong with it, but, but he was really uh, backtracking away from the whole thing. And now, once these, these emails were leaked, these documents were leaked, now they're all over it. Now everybody's running around claiming and pretending like they were right with us all along. Well, you know, Carl, what's really interesting is that in his press conference, Boehner said there's really two reasons why now we really have to take it to the select committee. One is the email by Ben Rhodes right. that is, as I said, as close to smoking gun as you're ever going to get in an investigation like this. That's right. And the second is that it was judicial watch that forced the release of these emails through a court proceeding. And when they released them, they basically, it was uncovered that all the documents that the White House and everybody involved in Benghazi was giving to these committees, they were so heavily redacted that they couldn't make any sense of them. So the difference between the redacted emails and the emails now fully released is so draconian that that is the proof of the cover-up. 
Because why would you have so many black marks everywhere? Which we've been saying the whole time. The black marks are not to conceal anything confidential, not to conceal anything classified. All of those black markings are just to conceal the truth from the American people. That's right. So yeah. basically, Judicial Watch forced, uh, compelled the full release of the document, and Boehner had to admit it's now as clear, and no pun intended, as black and white, that a cover-up was underway. Right. And that it led right to the White House. And, so, and, and Dr. Grace, let's remind our listeners, and let's remind ourselves what this cover-up was about. Yeah. It was about the terrorist Islamic terrorist attack on our embassy in Libya which resulted in the sodomization the the torture the brutal death and murder of an American ambassador while the White House apparently from what we know so far I, I well I'm just gonna be nice and say that they were aware of what was going on and basically did nothing and as ugly as that sounds it really is darker and deeper even than that and that's what this is about in other words dr. grace this smacks of absolute criminality to me do, do you feel the same thing in your bones oh absolutely I do I mean it was you know one question that really truly has not fully been adequately explained to the American people is why on earth did we leave our folks on the ground there when everybody else was going home, packing up and going home yeah. because of the danger of the situation? I mean, the British were leaving, the Red Cross had left. I mean, it was clear. Anybody, and, and the ambassador himself was begging for help. So this was, you know, at a minimum, a gross dereliction of duty. That's just at a minimum. Yeah. And I think that Hillary is running, running scared for her life. Remember when it was time for her to testify? Suddenly yeah. she got very sick, bumped yes. her head, fell yeah. on her head, the yeah. hospitalization, the virus. Well, i got to tell you this. She better get her doctor ready to receive her because the next subpoena is going to be far worse than the namby-pamby deposition she got last time. Right. Yeah. She's going to have to face Trey Gowdy. And Trey Gowdy is one tough cookie. Yeah, yeah. And do you also remember, uh, by the way, great, I mean, great reminder there. Thank you for that. Do you also remember that during this time, uh, there, we had military officers, military officials, some of them retired very high up, who were saying on the internet and in some of the alternative media that they knew for a fact yeah. that this was scheduled to be a false flag event wherein the ambassador was going to be kidnapped in exchange for the release, who was it? Uh, uh, some, it was a, it was a, it was a top Al Qaeda somebody some, some operative right? some yeah. operative and and of course that was immediately dismissed. But now after all of this came out, one of those military officials, uh, at least one, has come back forward and said, "I told you so. I told you. I told you." And when this thing, when all the dust settles, you're going to see that that was what this was all about, and it was conceived in the White House. That goes beyond criminality to me that just goes to direct treason well you know that is what the committee is for it's to prove what is accurate and what is speculation yeah. yep. and rumor and I have to say this a lot of people say oh you know nothing gets done in DC things move you know dreadfully slowly and I yes that's all true that is all true we can't really deny that but we've got to say that at least today with the work that Congress has done well, we do have to applaud them. It is a little bit like Watergate. They've kept digging. The Republicans have kept digging and digging, and they've kept pushing, pushing to the point that they've forced the Speaker of the House to capitulate. And they keep pushing so much that the mainstream media is going to have to follow. Even this week, uh, ABC, an interview on ABC, there, there was a, a reporter who asked Hillary, well, do you think Benghazi is, is done, or should we keep going with this? So they're even they, they're obliged. So basically, what we should all be proud of is that by pushing the story forward, we are inching our way towards the truth, and we are inching our way towards proof of a lot of what we've been saying. So I'm eager to see where the committee takes it from here, and how info, uh, events unfold, and how the facts come out, the incontrovertible yeah. facts. If we keep going in this direction, we're going to sink Hillary's candidacy beyond repair. Well, I was going to ask you about that. Listen, we're going to have to take a break. But before we do, before we do, Brandon has something to say. I think there's something very important that Dr. Grace just touched on because you said that we've kept pushing this issue. 
See, understand that if it wasn't for media sources like this one, like Freedom Friday, like Dr. Grace, like Michael Savage, like InfoWars, that kept this issue alive and pushed it to real everyday people that kept screaming. Boehner can stand up there and say that it was because of an email, and I'm sure that had something to do with it. But the bottom line is, is his head as, 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 as the Republican leader right now is on the chopping block, so to speak, because he has confronted nothing in this administration. Nothing. But because the people have kept pushing the issue, kept pushing the issue, kept pushing the issue, now he's backed into a corner that he has to do something or he's dead politically. Now, I hope he's done politically anyway, but he's got to do something. Dr. Chris? You are right. This is people power in action. We are part of a movement. And guess what? Next segment, we're going to talk about how we're having the same impact on the IRS scandal and we're pushing Democrats to move on that as well. Fantastic. I can't wait to hear that.